Greetings. I want to welcome everyone back from what I hope was a wonderful Thanksgiving holiday. The Thanksgiving holiday is usually a reflective time. With this in mind today, I'd like to address our whole campus community, but most especially our students. Over the past week, I've heard from a great many of you and want to thank you for your comments about the Wheeler Hall events on Friday, November 20th. I again want to express my deepest regret to all members of our community at the turn of events that escalated into police action. Violence is never an acceptable response, neither against nor by the police. Campus Police Chief Mitch Salea is conducting an operational review of Friday's events. There will also be an independent investigation by the Campus Police Review Board involving students, faculty, and staff. We are ready to evaluate and modify existing policies. As a campus, we must find ways to ensure that this type of escalation and violence does not reoccur. We must work together with our campus community to identify constructive behaviors and methods of communication that will strengthen our longstanding tradition of civil discourse, free speech, and freedom to assemble and protest peacefully. While I greatly sympathize with and understand the frustration, anxiety, and anger that our students and others feel at the recent fee increases and budget reductions affecting the campus. We must find ways to express our concerns through constructive behavior. Occupations of buildings, most especially academic buildings, that prevents the education of our students is not productive. Pulling of fire alarms endangers the safety of all members of our community and is illegal. As a university, we must be tolerant of differing perspectives but we cannot tolerate protests or actions that fail to respect the rights and safety of others. This budget crisis has generated a great deal of energy and emotion. We need to flow this energy in a constructive direction. As I said already, I completely understand and sympathize with our students upset with fee increases. Many families are undergoing significant hardships in these difficult economic times and many of you are worried about coping with the fee increases. Our financial aid office will deal as urgently and effectively as possible with all those in immediate need of financial aid. However, I do want to remind our students that those from families who are eligible for financial aid with incomes under 70,000 will not pay any fees at all as their fees will be covered by the University Blue and Gold Opportunity Program. It is clear, however, that these fee increases pose a real challenge for middle-class families who are not covered by the Blue and Gold Opportunity Program. We must work on finding solutions to increase aid for students from middle-class families. This is a top priority. We have an ambitious program to raise a $300 million endowment for undergraduate scholarships that should help us provide further support. We've already raised over $100 million towards this goal and we have a similar goal for graduate student support. I want to remind our faculty, students, and staff of the Chancellor's Matching Program for Endowed Student Support, which has been in place for a couple of years now. Many of you have already contributed personally, including almost the entire leadership team, and I thank you for this support. I appreciate that with furloughs, it may be difficult this year for faculty and st staff to contribute. However, pledges can be made now and paid off during the course of the Campaign for Berkeley through 2013. This is a very concrete way in which all of us can help offset the increased cost of education for our students. I'm most impressed by the fact that students have also donated through their graduating gift class, class gift, pardon me. I should add that our most recent donation was $100,000 from our undergraduate student Greek community. I'm very proud of our students for stepping up in this way. Many of you have expressed concern about how our budget is determined and choices are made. We are committed to openness and transparency in our budget process. The Berkeley budget turns out to be incredibly complicated because funds are distributed very broadly. To help our campus community understand Berkeley's budget, Associate Vice Chancellor for Planning and Budget, Aaron Gore, is, providing, is preparing a budget primer that will be available next week on our Budget Central website. 
the site is easily accessed from the home page. The good news on the budget front is that if there are no further cuts from the state and we are funded at last year's level, we may be able to achieve a balanced budget by next year because of increased revenues plus the cuts we have already made and anticipated savings to be realized through operational excellence. This will allow us to begin to increase the rate of faculty hiring. In fact, UCOP has submitted a budget to the state asking for full restoration of $918 million in state funding. However, we need to be very cautious about raising our hopes for next year, as the legislative analyst is already predicting a frightening shortfall in the state budget of $21 billion. We must realistically expect that Sacramento could consider further cuts to the University of California. I cannot emphasize the importance of this threat too much. Further cuts are absolutely unacceptable. We need to direct all of our energies to ensuring that this does not happen. We absolutely need your help to lobby your state representatives to gain their support for no more cuts. No more cuts. Moreover, we need to ask them at a minimum for a concrete plan for restoration of our funding. Our Government and Community Relations Office has created a toolkit for lobbying Sacramento. It is available at ucforcalifornia.org slash cal. Let me repeat that, ucforcalifornia.org slash cal. There you will find contact information for your local representative. A march on Sacramento in support of public higher education is being planned for March. We are hoping to have hundreds of thousands of people take part. I hope that you will plan on being among them. However, it's my view that we cannot rely on Sacramento alone. We are also developing a strategy to seek support from the federal government to help preserve the public character of our great public universities. Vice Chancellor Frank Geary and I have developed a proposal which we have discussed with the Obama administration. Our proposal is gaining support from a number of higher education organizations. We must also remember that our challenges are not just about money. There are a number of political and social justice issues that have profound impact on our campus community and to which I've given a great deal of personal energy. And I would like us to continue to work on these efforts together. These include addressing Proposition 209, which has had a profound impact on our underrepresented minority communities. I remind you that if, in 1996, 400,000 Californians had voted no on Prop 209, then it would not have passed. This needs to be put on the ballot again. We also must address Proposition 8, which has had a huge negative effect on our LGBTQ communities. Many of us have also been working to gain support for the Federal DREAM Act at both the federal and state levels in order to give opportunity to undocumented students. Twice in the past three years, the governor has vetoed a bill that would have allowed us to provide financial aid to undocumented students. Student action on this front could reverse this. It is important that our students in particular do not forget about these important issues of social justice and that some of the tremendous energy we've seen manifested on Sproul Plaza and at Wheeler be directed at these critical social justice issues. This is an important part of our public mission. I want to conclude today by asking all of you to join me in working together for our university. We all share a common goal, preserving and sustaining access and excellence. Over the next several months, my public affairs office will be putting together a number of forums to engage and inform our students on matters such as admissions, financial aid, campus budgeting, advocacy, and the state budget. I am committed to working together constructively as a campus community to find solutions to the challenges facing our campus. I know that by coming together, we will succeed.